and welcome to another Blueprint IoT video and today we will talk about the shunt. Right here at the front of the table we have a shunt available. This one is a very big one for experimental use, but shunts come in every form and size. But first of all, what is a shunt at all? Basically a shunt is just a resistor. The major difference to a normal resistor is basically its use. While the purpose of a normal resistor is to create a resistance, as the name is already indicating, the shunt is doing exactly the opposite. It tries to create a very, very small resistance. And when I say small resistance, we're really talking about something like 0 0.1 ohm or 0 0.01 ohm, something like this. So really pretty, pretty small. And the reason why the resistance needs to be this small is that the shunt is supposed to be in the circuit without influencing the circuit if possible. But why would we put a resistor or a shunt in the middle of a circuit without really using it for anything? The reason is that the shunt is used to measure. So imagine you want to measure the current within your circuit. Normally what you do is you open the circuit and you put in a measurement device in series. So in case you want to measure the current, the flow of electrodes is now going out of your circuit through your measurement device and back into your circuit. To do this, we could use any kind of amp meter, like this one here, a table amp meter, or we have also a small one available here. So that's a handheld amp meter or multimeter. So all those kind of measurement devices could be used. But what's happening inside those, especially digital amp meters, is basically the same as we would do with a shunt. Since it's very difficult to measure current digitally, we normally just measure a voltage. And that's where the shunt comes in with his possibilities. By integrating a amp meter or a shunt into our circuit, we basically don't influence the circuit because the amp meter or the shunt itself has a very, very low resistance. So our circuit should basically doesn't notice our shunt at all. But for us, the shunt offers the opportunity to measure the voltage drop along its resistance. So as you can see already here, we connected two measurement probes to our shunt, so we can measure quite conveniently everything that's going on at shunt. Since the resistance of the shunt is a known value, we can now calculate the current flowing through the shunt as soon as we measure the voltage drop at the shunt. So the characteristics of a shunt are basically two things. First of all, a very, very low resistance, and secondly, quite a precise resistance so that we have a stable value to calculate the current flowing through this circuit. So I guess you understood why we use shunts at all. But there's one more question to be answered. Why should we use shunts by our own since an amp meter is basically offering us the same service with an integrated shunt? Well, that's where the scope is coming in because scopes can only measure voltages and no current at all. So there's basically nothing like a scope multimeter. There's only a scope voltage meter and not a scope amp meter. So the scope is only measuring voltage and draws this voltage along a time axis. So in case we want to measure current using a scope, we have to use a shunt and connect the scope measuring the voltage drop at the shunt itself. And that's exactly what we're going to do. To start with, we will first of all measure the resistance of our shunt itself. To do so, we will use this table multimeter and measure the resistance. Since the resistance is pretty small, we need quite a precise measurement device, which is the reason why I opted for this big table multimeter to make sure we measure exactly. So let's go ahead and connect the shunt to the multimeter. So all right, everything is connected and the multimeter is doing its thing. And we see we have a resistance of 0.14 ohm, roughly. This is actually quite a big resistance for a shunt. Normally you would see something like 0.01 ohm. Once you use a shunt, it's always recommended to test the resistance of your shunt before you build it into your actual circuit, because in case you calculate with the wrong value of the shunt, all your measurements will be wrong. So it's always good to test this, especially if you have one of those experimental shunts like this one right here, where you have connections here and here, which will be create also kind of a contact resistance. So it's good to measure it. All right, since we know the resistance of the shunt now, we can integrate it into our circuit 
which you can find on the table as well. Basically we have a 5 volt power supply here which will be put through our circuit here on the blue board and afterwards being forwarded to a USB cable which is connected to this lamp here that's basically an LED lamp. On the blue board in the middle we are basically just distributing the power, integrating the shunt and measuring with the scope the supply voltage to 5 volts and also the voltage drop through the shunt. So let's go ahead and integrate the shunt in the circuit. So that is basically done. So let's activate the power supply. All right, power is on, which we can already see here on channel two, the green channel, where we can see an increase in voltage, which is basically five volts. All right, next step, I will activate the LED lamp. So we should see a change in our yellow line in the scope, which is basically the voltage drop alongside the shunt. So LED light is activated and we can see that the yellow line, the voltage drop through the shunt was increased and is actually now at roughly 30 millivolts. A bit more than 30 millivolts is actually resulting into 0.2 amps of current through our circuit and once we check with our power supply we can see the output is 0.22 amps so that's quite precise. So that's basically all about shunts. In case you liked the video make sure to give a thumbs up and be subscribed for more content like this and see you next time.